Do you want to live in a city where you're not stuck on a treadmill, constantly working to pay for your house? Then Pittsburgh might be the place for you, as it is one of the top places where houses are still affordable when compared to local salaries. Today we're going to be showing you whether we think Pittsburgh would make a great place to live with both the pros and the cons. Now Pennsylvania has always wowed us with its picturesque hills, endless trees, and waterfalls. Pittsburgh is known as the City of Bridges and also the City of Steel. Once dubbed the Smoky City, due to its steel mills and pollution, it has undergone an impressive transformation. There are no longer any steel mills in the city's core, which has resulted in cleaner air. And the city has further diversified its economy with technology, healthcare, and education. Though progress has been made, Pittsburgh is still included in the American Lung Association's 2023 list of most polluted cities. However, in March 2023, U.S. Steel, located just outside the city, shut down three of its highly polluting coke batteries, which gives us hope for continued improvement. I also have to mention Andrew Carnegie, a key figure in Pittsburgh's history. And yes, I went with Carnegie instead of Carnegie, as the Scottish like to pronounce it, because that's what I'm used to saying. So Carnegie went from rags to riches with his enormous profits from the railroad and steel industry, but his business practices were often criticized as unethical and exploitive towards workers. According to author Peter Crass, almost one of every five accidental male deaths in the Pittsburgh area were at a Carnegie coal mine, coke plant, or steel mill. Yet Carnegie's philanthropy has left a lasting impact, evident in the numerous libraries and buildings and the Carnegie Mellon University that bear his name. So on to the top reasons to move to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is one of the few places left where people spend on average just 20% of their income for a place to call home. U.S. News ranked Pittsburgh as one of the top affordable places to live in the U.S. After crunching the numbers, one of our favorite YouTube channels, City Nerd, put Pittsburgh at the top of his list for its affordability and walkability. Geography King also said it was one of his favorite cities. According to Zillow, the median sale price in Pittsburgh in June 2023 was $225,000. That is almost half of the U.S. median of $400,000. That's pretty impressive considering how great a city it is. We found some studio apartments for rent around $650 a month that were in okay looking neighborhoods. We even saw quite a few three-bedroom homes available for around $1,500 plus utilities. Our son would like this two-bedroom townhouse that we saw that rents for $1,100 a month. It even has a community pool and tennis courts. At the high end, there is the new Kaufman's Grand Apartments where you can rent a one-bedroom for $1,900 a month. It's a lot of money for Pittsburgh, but they come with a rooftop ice rink, swimming pool, movie room, fitness center, a dog park, and a rooftop basketball court. It even has a music room so you can jam with your friends. Though we didn't love the constant drone of traffic in the downtown area, the city has many other neighborhoods to check out. We went to the neighborhood that Mr. Rogers used to live in, Squirrel Hill. Now you know it's a friendly neighborhood if he lived there. It was very hilly with lots of trees and it would be one of our top picks. Not sure about biking there though. This four bedroom, 2,400 square foot stone covered home with a tile roof just sold for $550,000. We also saw this other more luxurious home listed for $819,000 with five bedrooms and four bathrooms. We also like Shadyside. It is a walkable tree line neighborhood located just outside of downtown. Everything you need can be found in the area, including a Whole Foods and a Trader Joe's, which we always like going to. Google even decided to locate their office there. In fact, Shadyside was labeled our Greenwich Village by the Pittsburgh Press in the 1960s and 70s. In Shadyside, we found this 1,300 square foot home that just sold for $325,000. It's a three bedroom, two bath built in 1890. Property taxes are $2,230 a year. Yes, it's a small home, but it's in Shadyside, right? The Strip District is also growing with lots of new buildings going up. We liked it because it's near the water and bike paths, and it has tons of restaurants with patios. 
I know people complain about gentrification, but it seems that the new buildings are replacing abandoned shops and parking lots. Unfortunately, we ran out of time to check out Murraysville, located just outside of town. We heard it has lots of trees and hiking and homes on big beautiful lots. It also has lower property taxes. Another neighborhood that we explored was Beachview. It was kind of fun and terrifying at the same time. With all those hills, it was a bit like being on a roller coaster. I couldn't imagine riding a bike in that neighborhood, could you? Which brings us how to get around Pittsburgh. We didn't try biking around Pittsburgh as we were nervous with all the traffic. They do have some good protected bike lanes though. The Great Allegheny Passage is part of a 335 mile biking and hiking route between Pittsburgh and Washington DC. It starts downtown near the fountain at Point State Park and offers some amazing views along the way. That North Shore Trail between the casino and uh, Washington's Landing is really like, I think that's the highlight. And they're great views of the city, really. You see the stadiums and uh, it, there, there's a great perspective of the city from that side. Every year they hold the Dirty Dozen Road Cycling Race where participants climb the 13 steepest hills in Pittsburgh. That even includes Canton Avenue, shown here. It is the steepest in the continental U.S. with a 37% grade. That's steep. And if you're a cycling enthusiast, you will love Bicycle Heaven, the world's largest bicycle museum. We had a blast checking out vintage bikes, including one rode by Paul Rubens and Pee Wee's Big Adventure. We were excited that walkscore.com gave Pittsburgh a score of 99, a walker's paradise. However, as far as getting around, we were really disappointed. Excited to explore on foot, we chose to stay downtown, hoping to walk everywhere. Google Maps showed us that we could walk along a waterfront multi-use bike path. However, after walking just a couple of blocks, the path was closed for repair. It looked like it had been closed for a while. We had to go around through some garbage-filled paths way out of our way to get back to where we were staying. And in our walks, we were also getting yelled at by people living in tents. On paper, Pittsburgh's public transit with the score of 97 sounded fantastic. They even have a fare free zone in the downtown area. However, wherever we wanted to go was far faster to take a car. For example, just to get to the top of a lookout to get a view of the city would take an hour by public transit. Or we could get there by car in just nine minutes. The same was true with many of the restaurants we wanted to go to. This was surprising as over 80% of all Pittsburgh bus routes go to downtown Pittsburgh. We decided that to give Pittsburgh a chance, we really needed to try taking the T-Light rail system. However, it went just a couple of stops and then surprisingly we were told we had to get off and transfer to a bus and then get back on the train at a later station. Apparently, part of the line was under construction. We didn't see any signs about the change in route, it would have been faster to walk. Sadly, in Pittsburgh, cars still rule. We envisioned a downtown filled with trees and trails and rapid transit. We got streets geared to cars and numerous highways with constant traffic noise. It was often hard to even hold a conversation. If you live in Pittsburgh, let us know what you think. Did we just go to the wrong areas or hit things at the wrong time? One of the things that blew us away about Pittsburgh was all the great restaurants. One of our favorites was Apteca, which was ranked as one of the top restaurants in the U.S. by the New York Times, and we have to agree. There is a very long wait to get in, but it was worth it. Their European food was all made from scratch, and I'm sure even Gordon Ramsay would love it. We also ate at Pusadi's Garden, and it was one of the best meals of our lives. They serve upscale Thai food, and it was very romantic with the outdoor patio. If you go there, be sure to try the mango sticky rice. Pittsburgh is also known for french fries and pierogies and Permanti's famous sandwich. From breathtaking gardens to world-class museums and numerous festivals, Pittsburgh has plenty to keep you busy every day. Our favorite place was the Phipps Conservatory, a year-round paradise of plants and flowers. When we visited, they had partnered with local schools to create an exhibit inspired by Billy Porter, which added fashion displays to this already stunning botanical garden. Our favorite was this dress, where the bottom is made of actual growing lettuce and her top is a fishbowl. 
Plus, don't miss the Center for Sustainable Landscapes, a true inspiration for tackling environmental challenges. It has won numerous awards for being net zero energy, net zero water, and it is truly spectacular. If we lived here, it is a place where we would love to volunteer. And the Carnegie Museum of Art is a fantastic place for a date. In the summer, they hold special nights where you can sit and take in great music and dinner before going into the museum, and it's all for free. There is so much art to see as you go from one gallery to the next, and you definitely need more than one visit to take it all in if you lived here. For history buffs, the Heinz History Center is a must visit. Our favorite exhibit was a set from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. It was incredible to see the actual bench he sat on to change his shoes. Plus, I never knew his mother hand knit the sweaters that he wore. And when he wasn't working, Mr. Rogers liked to wear a jumpsuit at home. The History Center is yet another place in Pittsburgh that needs more than one visit to see it all. Pittsburgh also boasts an exciting annual lineup of festival events, including the Three River Arts Festival, the Vintage Grand Prix, which is the nation's largest vintage street race, a jazz festival, and even a taco fest. We were lucky enough to experience Picklesburg, the best specialty food festival according to USA Today's readers. People formed long lines for pickle beer and to try some fried pickles. We even had a pickle juice drinking contest. If you're a sports enthusiast, look no further. This city is a paradise for sports lovers, so you're bound to see fans wearing jerseys everywhere. Uh, my personal favorite are uh, Pirates games, um, or any sports games really. Um, the Penguins are a big hit here as well. The Pittsburgh Pirates have won the World Series five times. The Pittsburgh Steelers play nearby at the Acrisure Stadium, located right along the waterfront. The team has won six Super Bowls. And you have to see the Pittsburgh Penguins that won the Stanley Cup five times. With over 29 colleges and universities, Pittsburgh is a hub for education. Carnegie Mellon University, ranked number 22 in the nation, is known for its programs in engineering, business administration, and a leading department in AI and robotics. Andy Warhol attended here as an art major before he moved on to New York. Fun fact, he was the only male member of the modern dance club here. Warhol once said that he would have rather been a ballerina than an artist. The University of Pittsburgh Medical, or UPMC, is a nonprofit that operates several hospitals in the city. And the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh ranked recently in the top 10 children's hospitals in the states. And we like the fact that every year, UPMC gives back more than a billion to the local communities, including free health programs and medical research. Now I have to mention that I've never seen as many men wearing dresses as I did in Pittsburgh. It felt like a very progressive city. In fact, Realtor.com ranked Pittsburgh as a number one affordable LGBTQ plus Mecca to buy a home. The crime rate in Pittsburgh is a lot lower than many other cities we have visited, such as Detroit and Chicago. However, I must mention that crime in Pittsburgh is above the national average. In 2022, they had 71 homicides, which is the highest number in the last decade. There are certainly some areas near downtown that we will avoid the next time we visit. So what do we think overall? Pittsburgh is a beautiful city filled with trees and hills and restaurants that we can't stop thinking about. However, it wasn't as walkable or as bikeable as we had hoped. And the public transit didn't exactly work out for where we wanted to go. Also driving was stressful with all of the high speed crisscrossing highways and bridges. As we get older, we are really hoping to live somewhere more walkable. However, we feel it is a place we should return to and investigate more. Perhaps, if we found the right neighborhood and learned easier ways to get around, we could change our perspective. If you've been to Pittsburgh or live there, please let us know in the comments below. Should we give it another chance? Are our impressions accurate? If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel as we continue our search for the best place to live. And remember to hit the notification bell so you won't miss our next video. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out these other cities.